Hey there, it's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I am back from Christmas with a haul slash lots of unboxings thing to do. Basically, I just drove into town and stopped at the post office on the way back to my house, and I have things to unbox, as well as a few things to show. So we'll start with the books that Santa Claus gave me for Christmas. He gave me three books, and I am very excited about all three of these. I decided to read this one first, which is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, I know it's three days after Christmas and I haven't finished a book yet, but give me a break. Lots of family things going on. Um, I chose to read this one first out of the, the three that I'll show you here because this is the one that my students are most excited about. So if I read this first, then I can finish it first and I'll be ready for them to check out when we come back from Christmas break. Next we have Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tori, Tomi Adeyemi. Um, she is coming to Salt Lake in February and I think I might run down there just to be in her presence because it's Tomi Adeyemi and she's a fantastic writer. But anyway, this is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. And if you haven't read that, it's a magical... How do I explain that story? It's set in on the African continent, and people have taken away magic, but our main character, Zele, or Zele, however you say it, um, is trying to restore magic. And I can't say much about this one because, one, I haven't read it yet, and two, I don't want to spoil things that happened in the first one. And the third book that Santa Claus gave me is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I've heard kind of mixed feelings on this just from people's comments on Facebook groups and different things. But I love Lee Bardugo's writing, and I want to go into it with my own, like, thoughts and opinions. So I'm going into this with kind of very flat-leveled expectations, other than that I know that the author is one that I enjoy. So we'll see if I like it or not. Uh, my bookish box for the month of December came the day that I was leaving town, and I stupidly did not bring this camera with me, so I tried to film the unboxing just on the QuickTime program on my computer and that failed miserably so you won't see my live reactions to this but I do want to show you what came in the bookish box because it was amazing the theme was all about Jane Austen and the t-shirt is the first item that I will show you it has major locations from Jane Austen's main six books we have Pemberley, Hartfield, Kellen Hall, Barton Cottage, Mansfield Park, and Northanger Abbey um, if you're unfamiliar with Jane Austen's books, they're absolutely, utterly fantastic, um, set in the Regency area in which she lived in England, and, oh, just the best that you can get in terms of classic literature is fantastic. Um, next we had a mug with a quote from Pride and Prejudice, I declare after all there is no enjoyment like reading. Another Pride and Prejudice item is this a mug wrap. It's got Velcro on the ends and you can wrap it around a mug or whatever you fancy to add a little Pride and Prejudice decor to your life. And we have a candle that's Christmas at Barton Cottage gingerbread in orange peel. It is a woodwick candle which you guys know how I feel about them. Oh, love so much. Uh, and it just smells like Christmas. And even though Christmas is over, I'm still on Christmas break until January 6th. So I'm going to enjoy this candle and just love it. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I should say Barton Cottage is from Sense and Sensibility. Um, and I guess I should tell you about the settings on the t-shirt. Pemberley is from Pride and Prejudice. And then I believe Barton Cottage was the one from Sense Sensibil Sensibility on the t-shirt. Now I'm going to have to grab it again to see what else they put on there. Hartfield is from Emma. Kellynch Hall is from Persuasion, my favorite. Um, Barton Cottage, yes, from Sense and Sensibility. And Manfield Park and Northanger Abbey, those are the titles of the books from which they come. If you ever want me to do a little talk about like Jane Austen's books and what like the essence of the stories are let me know in the comments and I'll do a Jane Austen video about her six books I did do a review of Persuasion um, on my channel of my it's my favorite book of all time so I think that maybe was the name of the video my favorite book of all time but 
Anyway, if you want to know more about Jane Austen's books, hit me up. I will do my best to satisfy your curiosity. Um, they also gave us some character cards. They do these every month. They're character tarot cards. They also do a monthly Zodiac bookmark, which they were unable to send, but they did email everyone and let them know that will be coming in next month's box. And I appreciate their letting us know, and that way I wasn't going, where's my bookmark? Where's my bookmark? But anyway, we do have these lovely character cards. Um, just by looking at the art, my brain is, is choosing them to be characters from Pride and Prejudice. So we have the world card, and I'm picking this to be Mr. Darcy because... Why the heck not? I guess it could be Mr. B it could be any of the Austin men, really, but in my brain, I'm saying it's Mr. Darcy. Um, we have the Hermit. We have a young lady sitting by a tree, and she's holding a book, and I'm choosing to s believe that that's Elizabeth Bennet. And then we have the Fool, which is a yeah, another young lady sitting at the piano, and I am thinking of her as Georgiana Darcy. Um, yeah, I, I could go on a rant about who these characters are and all that, but we don't got time for that. Let's move on. Okay, um, then we get to the pin, which I wish you could have seen my actual reaction to this pin because I almost cried. It is from Persuasion, which, as I mentioned before, is my favorite Jane Austen book, and it says, You pierced my soul. I am half agony, half hope. This is from the big romantic moment of the book, and I, again, I could go on and on and on and on about this, but just... Uh, it's lovely. Then we have kind of an odd item. I'm not sure if this relates to the book in the box, but I know it doesn't relate to Jane Austen because it's a typewriter. Typewriters were not a thing when she was writing. So I don't know how this fits, but it's a cute little typewriter necklace, so taken for what it is, it's nice. Things are falling. It was just an empty box, don't worry. Alright, that brings us to the book, and the bookish box does exclusive dust jackets, so here we have two young ladies in a Regency era dress and a lovely wilderness and um, uh, an estate of some kind in the back. And then we have the actual cover, which shows us Dangerous Alliance. And it says here, an ostentatious romance by Janique Cohen. I think you say her name, Janique. And this is about a noble woman named Lady Victoria Aston. And she seems to have everything that she could want, but her life is overturned in the course of one night. Things go wrong with family, and I don't want to spoil stuff, but she's kind of like a fan of Jane Austen's and relying on Jane Austen's books to get her through life, which some of us sadly do, and Jane Austen doesn't have a book about her particular situation, so she's like, well, what do I do now? As someone who has suffered from the lack of no real-life Mr. Darcy's in the world, or Captain Wentworth's, or Mr. Knightley's, or, you know, that guy... I understand what it is to rely on Jane Austen for life advice and not get it, so I totally understand her, um, her predicament. We'll say that. Alright, so that wraps it up for the bookish box. So I got a letter um, from one of my best friends who lives in Germany. He and I have been pen pals for like well over a decade, so I got this letter, and I always like to look at the German stamps, because, I mean, granted this is just a flower, but it's from another country, it's fun. Um, I probably won't read this letter aloud because he writes personal things often and kind of feel like that would be rude of me to read his personal writing out loud, but I will show you <laughs> the front of the, the card that he sent because he always picks out funny cards and then writes really personal things on the back. So the front of the postcard is Santa and a reindeer taking a selfie. It's cute. Alright, so moving on to the next thing. Okay, so I paused for a second to read that card, and uh, I love my friends. I have, uh, I have great friends, and this friend, oh, he tugs up my feels when he writes cards because he's just a good writer. Okay, moving on. So this package is from Aaron at what used to be called Phantom of the Month Club. I now think it's like Phantom Monthly or something. Um, she did a Harry Potter box and. 
the um, I ordered one because I want to support her and she, I know she's had some struggles with her company and stuff and when she um, she always seems to find the most fun like unique things so I wanted to order something from her and it was Harry Potter related it's supposed to come in a wooden box so I'm assuming the wooden box is going to be inside of this and um, she did email and say there were one or two items that had to be mailed separately because of some some struggles and I'm fine with that because she let us know so let's see what did come in this box Ooh, oh apparently I did not cut all the tape hold on a moment lots of tape to cut on this box alright I had to cut six pieces of tape so now we're ready to open I think come on out little box lid Da, 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 da. Um, okay, let's see what we've got here. Packing materials. More packing materials. Alright, so I'm seeing a towel, which is probably, you probably also saw that too, and so... There were some items wrapped inside the towel, but let's like, take a look at this towel first. Oh my gosh, it's a butterbeer recipe on a towel. Are you kidding me? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, so this is a kid-friendly butterbeer. It has milk, butter, brown sugar, butterscotch topping, and cream soda. Cool! It says you can also top with whipped topping if you desire. I might um, make this when I go babysit my nephews in January for a few days. Hmm, that's fun. But what a fun idea to have a recipe on the towel. See, I told you, Erin finds good things. It's, she does a great job. Alright, next we have a spoon that is like an Elder One spoon. <laughs> this is fantastic. Let's take a look here. See, the, the handle of the spoon looks like the Elder One because it's got all the knobbly bits. And then we have a spoon, which is... Ron's emotional range. All right, next we have some earrings, and I knew I was pretty sure that there was going to be some kind of jewelry included in this box because that's what she does. And sure enough, we have what looks like a Hogwarts crest on a wax seal earrings. That's so much fun! <laughs> awesome. I like wearing things like this that are that are either small or kind of not super obviously Harry Potter so you have to like really look and go oh I see what that is I see what that is that's very fun all right the other item that was wrapped inside this towel is further wrapped and so we're gonna have to get into this I see the word Gryffindor on it what is it oh my gosh it's a wallet so we have a Gryffindor wallet with Harry Potter on the back. Oh my gosh, what language is this? Harry Potter und der Gefangen von Azkaban? Is that German? I'm gonna freak out if it's German. Holy cow! I'm gonna have to Google that later because I have no idea. But I kind of love that it's in a different language. Some people might hate that and think, oh my gosh, how stupid but I, I kind of love that. I'm not a big wallet user, but I, I do really, really like this wallet. And yes, it's Gryffindor, which is not my house, but it's not red, red like Gryffindor. It's got purples and blues and pinks and all different fun colors. I appreciate it. Here we have something wrapped in a piece of paper. What is this? It smells lovely. Oh, cute! It says Aaron's Every Flavor Soap. And it's hard to read the ingredients because the, the typing is so small, but it looks like it's got juniper berries in it, um, olive pomace oil, coconut oil, organic something butter. It smells kind of a little bit fruity, and you can see their little 
colorful things inside of there are those beans, like every flavored beans. That's super fun. So she must have made this herself. I've never tried to make soap before. I would imagine that it's something that takes a great deal of patience, which I don't have a lot of the time. But this is going to be fun to use. And very cute wrapping matches with the Birdie Bot's Ever, Fla Ever Flavor Beans. I'm just making a pile of stuff on the floor, and this is a really bad idea because when I was at my parents' house for Christmas, I walked out to the car to go visit my sister, and I fell down in the gravel and bashed the heck out of my left knee to the point where I think that I might have done more than just surface damage because I can't even, like, kneel on it for half a second. So me trying to pick up all the stuff that I put on the floor is going to be comical to say the least. Wish me luck. All right, back to the box. We have the wooden box. Um, this is a, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So this is not like heavy duty wood, like I kind of what I was thinking it would be. And it's a little bit smaller than what I thought, but wood products I ha are close to my heart because my dad has been a woodworker all his life. And this just smells like our garage when we were kids growing up because it's wood but look at the top of this oh, so nice I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna put in this but I do know it's gonna go on my Harry Potter shelf and yeah it's yeah little side note um, I on Christmas morning I couldn't sleep mostly because of the pain in my knee and so I was looking at um, a video online about the Funko Pop Harry Potter advent calendar for this year and I impulsively bought it so I know it's too late to like actually use it as an advent calendar this year but it, it should come in the mail on Monday and I'm going to take the figures and make them into Christmas ornaments which I did with the figures from last year's advent calendar for my classroom tree which is a Harry Potter tree. Um, if you would like me to make a video on how I make the ornaments please let me know. It's super easy and I can teach you really, really quickly. So let me know if you're interested in seeing how that is done. All right, we have more items in the box and I think it's going to be a mug because it's wrapped in all of this stuff and seems to be that shape. Save these poppers for later if I get bored. Oh, there's something inside them. No, that's just packing material. Okay, more packing bubble things. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so this mug, it's pretty. Um, it is, there is a little note on the bottom that says do not microwave. But look at this Accio coffee. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I still appreciate the mug. So it'll go on my Harry Potter shelf as well. And I won't use it for coffee. I uh, will use it for either herbal tea or hot chocolate. But it's still lovely. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's kind of this rainbow sheen on it. And it's just, it's just a very pretty mug. This might be one that never gets used to actually drink beverages because it's just pretty to look at. And I just want it to sit there and be pretty. All right, so that is it for this box. Like I said, there are going to be a couple more items coming in the mail. And I appreciate Aaron letting us know that they were going to be a little bit late. I will definitely show you when those do come. All right, I do have one more box. We have Once Upon a Young Adult Book Club box for December. And I decided to do something different. Usually with this particular box, um, I'll film myself opening it and seeing what the book is and then as I read the book I'll open the gifts because you're supposed to open the gifts on certain pages of the book um, as you read and then I'll wrap up the video after I finish the book and show you what all the gifts were. I decided this month just because it's Christmas time I mean I'm in the mood to open things and I have no impulse control today I am just going to open everything so we'll see the book and we'll see the gifts and then I'll have to go back and figure out how they fit into the book later on because that's just what we're going to do this time. And let me know if you would prefer this way in the future or if you would prefer me to do like I've done in the past and show everything after I'm done reading the book. All right, let's cut this sucker open. And 
things. Here we go. I see blue things. First, let's find the book. Okay, so we have Songs from the Deep by Kelly Powell. Hmm, is this a mermaid book? Maybe Sirens. Okay, on the back it says, It's been said just the sight of a siren is enough to drag men into a watery grave. Children's stories for the most part. But in this moment I have little trouble believing them. I imagine her gaze flitting up the cliff, watchful and hungry and dark as the deep, to find me staring back. I won't let them blame you, I tell her silently. Whoever killed Connor, for whatever purpose, I'll track them down myself. What? Who's Connor? Who, what, wha, what happened? I need to find out more. All right, so after reading the inside of the dust jacket, I found out that this is about a book, uh, about a book. This is a book about a girl named Mora who lives near the sea, and everyone knows there are sirens in the sea. And a young boy is found dead on the beach and the sirens are blamed and she feels like someone is trying to frame the sirens that, that this boy Connor was actually murdered and so she and her childhood best friend Jude who is a lighthouse keeper decide they're going to take on this case and figure out who actually killed Connor so it's kind of like a sea creatures mystical thing but with a murder mystery mixed together and that sounds actually very intriguing they did send us a signed book plate so I can stick that in there and they always send an art print with a quote from the book. It says, I'll give the island my music and it will sing. Hmm. That's quite a lovely print actually. I think this one might go in my classroom. I have a cupboard with very tall long doors and I put bookish prints on them. The left side is all Harry Potter stuff and the right side is a mixture of other different books and things. But this can go on that side. All right, now I said I was going to open the gifts for you, and that I shall do. Give me a moment to clear all the crinkle crap out of the box, and then we'll get started. All right, the first item comes from on page 74, and when I get to page 74, then I will learn why they sent this. What is it going to be? umbrella? I kind of think it's an umbrella. Yes, it's an umbrella that's getting stuck in the box. Come on out! That could have been much worse because I thought for a second, oh, I'm going to break it. But I did not. Alright, it has this lovely purple sleeve and we're going to kind of just open it out so you can see the fabric. I won't open it all the way because we're indoors and I'm sitting right in front of a camera. But it kind of looks just like raindrops falling. That is super cute. And it's purple, which, of course, is a necessity in my life because the school that I teach at, our color is purple. Technically purple and white, but yeah. All right, the next item is this darling little box that I'm supposed to open on page 140. It has a blue ribbon on it, which I'm going to untie. This is, oh, this is cute. Okay. I love the attention to detail that this box does. Oh my goodness. It's a pocket watch on a chain, so you could use this as a necklace or like some people put pocket watches in their pockets. That's super pretty. Okay, so if I lift this up, you can see the outer casing. Lovely. I have a Ravenclaw pocket watch that came in a Harry Potter subscription box a long time ago and I don't really use it all that much but I think I would wear this as a necklace and get a kick out of like in class being like you guys are driving me insane this class is never going to end and just using it as a torture device for my children because if I don't get to Raz's kids then what joy is there in my life? Long story short, I like this pocket watch. The next item is in this cute little box for page 194. And what it's going to be is a mystery. Um, what is this? <gasps> it's a music box. Oh my goodness, this is darling. Okay, first let's take a moment to just aesthetically appreciate the appearance. We've got oceany waves, 
around the sides. There's the little crank and then the top has got a different design on it which could be oceany creatures or shells or who knows what. That's a lovely tune. Okay, oh my goodness. So I open it to see the mechanism and there's a lighthouse inside here. This is one of those things where I could sit here and hold this and turn this and watch it for hours. Yeah, I am weird, I know, but you know, you could get yourself hypnotized by just watching the mechanism go around and round. I'll move on. <laughs> Our last item is in this envelope and it is for page 228. You never know what you're going to get in here. Is this going to be a paper replica of something in the book? What? Oh, there's two things. Okay. First, we'll take the paper bit. Violin lessons for beginners and intermediates. For more info and rates, contact more Alexander or speak to Miss Bracken. There are worse things I can do. Okay, so Moira must be a violinist. I don't know about the scribbled note at the bottom. Who would have done that? Um, I'm assuming Miss Bracken is her violin teacher, maybe, or maybe her mother. Um. I'm intrigued to find out more about what this is. There was also a second item in here, which is a little cloth. I'm going to pull it out of the plastic. So it has the ocean waves that seem to match the aesthetic of the other items. And this is the kind of cloth that I use to clean my glasses. Um, I'm not sure if that's what it's meant for, or if it represents something else in the book. But there we go. So that's all for today. Um, let me know about the questions I was asking before about how to unbox this particular box and if you want videos about Jane Austen books or um, making Christmas ornaments out of mini Funko Pops so, um, so I'll know whether or not to film those things. Have a wonderful Saturday or a wonderful weekend or whatever it is when you're watching this and make it a bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.